up, want to introduce to you my partner, Greg Howard, Guitar Tech to the Stars. Hey, Greg, what are you going to show us today? So, uh, a lot of people ask about um, restringing guitars, how I restring guitars and keep them in tune, um, you know, on multiple songs, um, live. Um, I worked for ACDC last year for Stevie Young. The guy hits harder than anybody. This is what, you know, this is, so that's one of his picks before. Yep. And that's after uh, maybe a song um, that looks like uh, Let There Be Rock. Um, so, you know. Uh, Hitting him hard. A guy that hits pretty hard. Um, and we only change guitars maybe twice, sometimes three times in a, you know, 75 minute set. So, um, uh, and stringing guitars, the, the correct way is the way to keep them in tune. Um, so I've got, uh, I've got my, uh, Les Paul here. It's an R8 from 2004, um, that my wife gave me as a present on my 40th birthday and let's get to it. Um, so, uh, I'm going to use some of these, uh, nice DR Veritas strings, uh, 10 through 46 is what I put on my Les Pauls. So, um, was that the kind of string gauge that you're using with Brad, with Aerosmith, or what um, did he prefer mostly? With Aerosmith, uh, he likes nines on his Les Pauls, and I put tens on anything with a tremolo. So all the strats, um, and actually most of the Fender guitars, I will put tens on. And he may or may not realize that there are tens, um, <laughs> but he uh, but he plays you know plays them well. Now contrast that with uh, Stevie Young. What gauge was on his? So graph? Stevie used um, Stevie used a custom set that we got from uh, Daddario, and they were uh, twelve through fifty six. Is that one of the sets right there? Yeah, twelve okay, through fifty six with a wound G. There you can see. Look at that right there. Stevie Young set strings from Daddario, a wound G. Yep. That is a tough guitar. Big and heavy. <laughs> and he played, uh, you know, he played through, he played on Malcolm's guitars. So, um, so what did you find was the biggest challenge in keeping someone that can do that to a pick in under five minutes to keep their guitar in tune? I mean, this, uh, your method never really showed a problem or a flaw in it. No, it? no. My, I mean, I've, I've been stringing guitars the way I'm going to show you. Um, I've been doing it the same way since, um, 1999, um, I toured the band called uh, The Verve Pipe. Uh, guitar player was named AJ Dunning, great player, um, a great technician as well. And we kind of went through he and I every way to wrap a string, you know, through with the with the kind of hook that you kind of lock it in. Um, the know. benefits of an entire case of free strings. Yes, that's true, <laughs> and uh, and a lot of guitars to 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 test out um, live um, and. What we found works um, is what I'm going to show you, which is not locking the string end. Um, I don't like locking the string end with the uh, the common method of you know putting it through and then locking it around, mainly because if a string breaks, um, especially if it breaks at the bridge, getting that string on and off within a song, which is what I normally do live, if something if something breaks, you know I'll I'll have it, I'll have a string change within a song. To hand right back to the guitar player, and it's got to be it's got to be strung, stretched, and ready to go within a song. Within a song, right? Because they got the number one out there. That's the one they want. Yeah, play. normally, and that's yeah. uh, that's the one that's the one it usually happens on. So, um, you know, I mean, of course, you know, most of the guys I work for have multiple guitars, so it's not like they'll they're going to die if they don't get their guitar back in one song. But that's just my, uh, you know, that's my trial by fire you know that's what i do so um so normally on a les paul i since i don't want to i don't want to take all the strings off unless i'm doing a fretboard cleaning which i most of the guys i work for don't really care they don't you know they don't care about a super clean fretboard um, um usually like once a tour or something i'll oil, oil a rosewood board um especially like brazilian rosewood like this um but i i do three strings at a time um okay. there's you know with a touring guitar, it helps to keep a little bit of tension on it, just um, just so the neck doesn't move so much. But to, I mean, to be honest with you, I mean, the strings aren't going to be off for like two days or anything. They're going to be off for five or ten minutes. It's not going to make that big a difference. Um, I just don't like chasing down, you know, t these bridges that 
fall off. You know? Yeah, um, yeah. I mean, I've seen some guys where they take the stop bar off and string the stop bar and then lay it. Yeah, on I've seen car. a lot of guys do that, and uh, like you know, this um, <laughs> with Brad Whitford, he likes to he likes them strung over the uh, the stop bar. Um, okay. You know, some guys like that. Um, I I don't I don't particularly see a difference, but um, you know, if the artist sees a difference, you know, and that's what they want. That's what they get. Um, so what I do is um, I always use um, for tuning and for to keep string breakage down to a minimum. I use Big Ben's nut sauce. Um, I've used it for however long it's been out. Um, Stuff works. It works great. So a little bit here on the bridge in the in the slot, and then a little bit in the nut. And that's now, all what you, are you putting? Just like a, like one drop, or you yeah, it's just like a little a bit. It's 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 about a drop. So here's my technique. Um, what I like to do on wound strings on Gibson on three and a line um, is uh, I put one wrap up uh, above the string, one wrap below. That's it, and leave the excess sticking out. So. Um, I just, I kind of know where it's at. Um, now, do you measure it out by tuners? Like go like two tuners away? No, or three I know. I measure it out by my hand. By like, your hand. Just like, so I, when just you like it thumb, is. Um, okay. it's just kind of, um, it's like putting a T in the ground yeah, for just, golf. Yeah. You it's put like it in the same way trial and error. And, um, you know, so, you know, and if it doesn't work out, I'll, I'll just put another string on it. Um, but, uh, this should be about right for this guitar. So. I'll just do one up and then one down. So that's normally what you're going to get. One up, one down. Um, locks the string in pretty well. Um, so basically, I could see as, you, as you're winding it, it, it kind of closes its jaws on the string itself and pinches it. Right. Yeah, I could see that. So it's essentially, uh, it's a lot like doing the wrap where you come around and kind of lock it, lock the string back on itself. Um, and I'll show you what that looks like as well. So you're going to show us a, a sort of a different method that you wouldn't normally yeah, use. Yeah, this is, I'll show you the method that's common. A lot of, a lot of touring guys use it. Um, More like a classical nylon tie off or yeah, something like that? Yeah, it's, it's, um, it's just not what I prefer, and it's, it's in fact, I, I haven't done it so long. Uh, so it's where you wrap the string around and then bend it. And so when the string comes, when you start, when you wind the string, it, it locks it in, okay. which, is, which is fine. Uh, you know, there's no right or wrong reason. Um, but when you lock the string in like that, there's such a severe bend in it. Um, that I find when changing strings, um, it's, a, it's a detriment. So so again, I'll kind of bring the string up uh, maybe two inches off the, off the fretboard um, and then wind one up and one down. Now, where do you find that the strings, for the most part, break? And what would you think was the reason why they broke? I mean, have you noticed some consistencies there or, or some observations there? Um, strings mostly break at the bridge. Um, and the reason being, um, on a tunematic, um, mostly, a um, less, little less on like a fender bridge, but on a tunematic, um, you gonna you got a groove here. And this groove gets a little wear on it. Um, I don't have one of Stevie Young's, you know, guitars here, or I can show you the ones on his guitar um, were literally like a crevice, and um, I had to change them. You know, he wear right through the nickel into the brass. Um, and what I did to prevent breakage on his strings, every time I change the strings, I use this Mitchell's abrasive cord, um, different gauges of it, and I would actually go in and just saw back and forth a little bit and just round over any kind of edge there. Um, and that prevented a lot of string breakage um, for Stevie. Um, yeah. I only had, uh, I only had one string break on me in the entire nine months that I worked for those guys. And it was before I started using that abrasive cord. 
Um, it was on my first night and, uh, not knowing that he hit the guitar as hard as he really, as he hit the guitar. And, uh, But once I figured that out, then no problems at all. So same thing on the fourth string. The fourth string, since it's a little bit smaller, sometimes get maybe a half an extra wind on the bottom. Not a big deal um, that I found. So basically, you're looking to get one above, but one to two on. Yeah, yeah. On the fourth, it, it, you know, I, I might get a, a, an extra one just, and it, and it helps with the the angle. Um, but it's it's not a big deal. And on the plain strings, I do one up, and then I do two to three down because there's plenty of room on the on the post for it, and especially with G strings on Gibsons. Oh yeah. Um, or pretty much any six in a line, Gretsch, whatever, um, you'll get uh, a little bit of slippage. Um, the G mainly will be your will be your big issue. The G string blues. Yeah. All right. Speaking of uh, speaking of the G string blues on Gibsons, uh, what or really any like you're saying three and three headstock. How did the wound G? Did you notice a difference on uh, Stevie's guitar that uh, it didn't slip as much with the wound string or? Would yeah, that did, better tuning stability for G. Or? Yeah, a better tuning, and for as hard as he hit the guitar and as hard as Mal hit the guitar, um, it really did. Um, it really did help out. Um, you know, those guys. It was just he's he's sawing wood. I mean, all let me night, see that you know? pick again. I mean, um, that is just insane. This is know? something. I mean, that is for real. That is really what a pick would look like. And it's the and it's song. the way he hits the strings. <laughs> It's all from the elbow, and it's kind of at a 45 degree angle. It's just like that. That's what you know. That's how he played all night long. And you know, as a rhythm guitar player in a band like ACDC, there's not a lot of stops. Um, you know, he's he's going all night. You know, and those songs. It's a big part. The rhythm guitar is a big part of a band like that. So again, just a little bit of the Big Ben's nut sauce. I usually wipe this off at the end. It's not a big deal. It's not, Once you've it's strung not it up, you'll take a little bit of the excess sauce off the. Nut. Yeah, yeah. Right. Just, just, just wipe off the excess once the once the string's in its in its place. Right. Um, so I normally cut these about a quarter of an inch off. Not a big deal. They're not stick. And that's the other thing. We're not we're not winding it around. They're not sticking up. And sticking in some and sticking in the guitar player's fingers when he goes to tune, or anything like that. Um, so on the plain strings, you know, pretty much the same. Uh, I get it up, you know, put my index finger down and just pull it up a little bit. So you usually always go bass to treble, not treble to bass, in terms of the restringing. Right, the right. That's, and just, and that's just and that's just that's just me. Um, I you know I know guys that are. Left-handed, that string in the opposite way, um, and even when they're stringing a righty guitar. Okay. Um, but another, you know, each tech has its own thing. Um, again, no right or wrong way to do it. Just the way I've done it for, um, you know, 17 years, and with multiple acts that, you know, some guys have a light touch, some guys have, you know, super heavy touch, like like Stevie Young. Now, let's say on tour. What time of day would you normally be doing this, and what else would be going on around you while you're doing this? So normally, uh, backline goes in anywhere between 10 and noon. Um, we can't do any work until really everything else is done. You know, there's uh, you know 20 trucks plus of sound, lights, staging, video. Um, it's all got to be in the air, out of our way, so that once we take the stage, we're the last, you know, the last guys to, to get the stage. Um, so normally, I do this before lunch, if we get the stage early enough, and I change between, depending on the, depending on the artist, depending on how many guitars he, uh, he carries, I change between one and 10 guitars a day. Uh, 
you know, however long, you know, you saw however long that takes me to do that. Um, of course, there's going to be some stretching involved. But um, I don't change. Uh, most of the guys I work for are not real adamant about new strings every day. Um, I only change the main guitar every day. Something that gets, in other words, the main guitar being the guitar he, that, um, that the artist played for, you know, five songs or more. And, uh, you know, with Stevie, that was his, it, his number one, which was Mal's number two. And uh, that got changed every day. His backup, which may only see one song, maybe two songs a night, um, that's going to get uh, that's going to get changed every couple of shows. In other words, and may, basically what I do is I come in, I put my finger down the string, and if it feels dirty, feels disgusting, off it goes. You know, it feels dead. Um, now, who was it that used to go through strings like in a song? That they would be corroded within one song. Well, I had a uh, I worked for Machine Head in the early 2000s, and uh, their bass player Adam Deuce, um, I couldn't change his strings before sound check because he would they would be completely dead by the time he did sound check. So uh, I normally did his strings after sound check before dinner. Um, you know, just just there, there's some guys that just have that kind of either acidic sweat or whatever um, that kind of makes them. Uh, you know, not really just brutal on strings. Um, so speaking of Machine Head, um, so I learned to stretch strings from Rob Flynn, the singer from Machine Head, singer guitar player. And um, I've been doing it this way since he taught me, probably in 2000, I think it was. And how he did it was to kind of protect his hands. He used to take a string, uh, just a string package, right, like this. And he'd put it on the string. And then he would basically just run it up and down the string. So you're using your thumbs right there. So basically, of. yeah, put my fingers under, put my thumbs up, and then just basically just, what I'm doing is I slack the string and then just pull on it. Um, okay, so you're not to pitch right now. No, I'm not to pitch. I don't, I don't tune to pitch until after I stretch the strings. Okay. Um, uh, I got this little get gadget called the stretcher. Stretcher. Um, and this is actually kind of cool. You put the string in there. And it kind of does it for it, and you just really just you just roll it back and forth. Um, it's like a zip line. And this is what I've been using for about the past year. Ooh, and um, but either, either way you do it, you want to get a good stretch in. Um, you know, if you don't get if you don't stretch these things in, and I know a lot of people will be like, "Oh, you're pulling," you know, you're pulling all the goodness out of the string or whatever. Um, no, um, if you know if you're if you're playing live. And you need your stuff to stay in tune. You've got to do this. It's uh, it's the only way. You know, I don't want I don't want to hand a guy a guitar and he play one song and by the end of the song the whole thing's out of tune because it didn't get stretched properly. Um, so yeah. So then you know I can you can use that. Use your again. Use your hands. You know, use the string pack. But basically, just push down with your thumbs, pull up a little bit, and just go up and down the string. Um, you know, if you pull too hard. Uh, you know, you can break a string. I've broken, I've broken plenty of strings, and of course, I sure would rather have it break when I'm stretching it than when an artist is out playing it. So, so I do the same thing um, on the plain strings as well. All right. So, is this the kind, of, the same kind of thing you were doing for for Jason White when you're with Green Day for those years? Same exact thing. I've been doing this since uh, since 2000, so almost 17 years now. Worked well for him. Worked. worked yeah, well. worked well. Worked well for him. It works. Work. It's worked for everybody that I. You know, they don't. You know, most artists. You know, I don't really explain it to them. They don't need to know. Um, they just know that the guitar doesn't go out of tune, and they prefer that. Interesting. So same deal with the plain strings on the stretching, just pulling them back and forth. Um, and the plain strings is one where you, if you pull it a little too much, um, you can break it, um, usually at the ball end. But that's usually, uh, that's usually just, you know, it can be a bad string. It just could be, uh, you know, it, it, a failure point uh, that could happen during the show. You don't want that, so. Um, all right, so then, uh, then after that, I, I, I'll string it to pitch. Um, now, your preference for tuners, I mean, do you, do you find that you can get away with anything, or do you prefer I can to use, use the Pearsons? I can use, I can use pretty much anything, and, you know, you can use a Boss TU-2. Um, I know a lot of Texas use a TU-2. I prefer 
to use a Peterson and I've been using Peterson's strobe tuners um, since the, uh, I have a, I have a model 100, I have a model 200. I have, you know, all the 400s, the 420, the 450s. Um, and um, I have the original virtual strobe and now I have the Strobo Plus HD. Um, so what I do is I, I like the Strobo Plus HD for the, for the strobe. Um, and I'm using a Korg GT12. Um, I always use a tuner with a needle on it. I just like I just like to be able to see that needle go straight up. Um, and then I've also got one of the uh, the Korg Pitch Blacks. I have a rack mount unit, but um, with this setup, I, I'm using the pedal tuner, and that's more for quick tuning where I can see the display really well. All right. So I've noticed that before with your touring rigs, your your uh, workbox always seems to have three tuners on there. Always. I just it's just a and it's a fail safe. I mean, sometimes during the show, it's so loud um, that, you know, some of them, some of the tuners will freak out a little bit and just not, uh, what not give you. What do you think you started using the three tuner deal on, or is that so long ago? That it's been so long ago. I, I, again, like I said, I've always used, um, um, a GT12, Core GT12 or a Boss TU12. Um, I used to carry around a, a legion of Boss TU12s because, they were real finicky for some reason and sometimes they would work and sometimes they wouldn't wouldn't work so I, i'd always have a backup and i always put a backlight on the tu 12s because they didn't have one um, and i need to be able to see in pitch black um, and that's why i switched to the gt12 because it has a backlight um, it also does multiple tunings it does open d open e open a um, and which is really nice to be able to to do that so So once it's tuned to pitch, um, I normally go through and stretch it again, um, um, play around a little bit. Um. Now, what advice did Angus Young give you about um, sort of testing in Stevie's guitars? Was he saying that you got to smash them, or what, what? What was the deal there? Because I remember that I know there's a story there somewhere. Yeah, yeah. I mean, just, just, just. You know, we. When the the band doesn't sound check, um, you know, bands of certain caliber, uh, you know, they just they don't sound check anymore. They 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 depend on us crew guys to do it for them. So we have a crew jam, and with ACDC we did a couple of rounds of about half a back in black. I think we did up to the solo, and you got to play as close to your guy as possible. Um, so if your guy's smashing on it, you got to be smashing on it, you know, because. The monitor engineer, the front of house guy, they've all got to get the levels like, you know, like the real guys playing it. And, uh, you know, I do my best. You know, I'm not a, obviously I'm not the same caliber as those, is most of the artists I work for. Otherwise, I'd be the artist. And, uh, but I like the technical, you know, stuff. And, uh, you know, I like what I do. Um, so then just after stretching, it's going to be down about a semitone at least. So just go back, um, and I'll go straight down the strings, low to high tuning, and then uh, sometimes I'll go, I'll do the, the three wounds, and then do the three um, plain strings up from the bottom. Just, I mean, it's it's kind of so here, double check, it's kind of here check. and there, double check, triple check. Um, and then my standard check live, um, I'm usually wearing in-ear monitors and uh, listening to the same mix as my artist. And so I'll turn that down and then I actually will put... Um, I'll hit an E chord and put it to my ear. And I, I can hear whether it's in tune, you know. Uh, you know, obviously I trust my, my electronic tuners to get me there, but I want to hear... If it's just a little, and it's just something, years of experience, just something I, I can hear, whether it's, you know, it's off just a little bit on the A or the G, like the G on this one. Um, and that's how I just make sure that I'm handing a guy an in-tune guitar. <laughs> 